Due to the runaway hype train No Man's Sky has both benefited immeasurably and suffered immeasurably from, it's probably important to make it clear what this video isn't before we begin. It isn't a list of grievances comparing the advertisements and the finished product, plenty of people are already cataloging those elsewhere. And honestly, talking about concepts like where the line is between a lie to your audience and being open about a game that's still in development and evolving with features that might not make it into the final build could fill its own video. This also isn't a technical criticism. Yes, the game crashed on me. A lot. And yes, I've seen some weird bugs, but I'm not one of those rah-rah 60fps where's the field of view slider consumer rights guys, and I'm not really interested in looking at the game from that angle. What I am interested in is how the final game we have in our hands comes together. Not a bundle of promises, not a pile of extrapolated hype, but a real game running real code with solidly defined systems that we can sit down and play with. How do those systems come together and do they add up to anything? What makes No Man's Sky work or not work? Well, the what makes it work part is actually pretty easy to get to. The game's at its best when it evokes the Captain Hoek and Cadet Stimpy episodes of Ren and Stimpy, or the first episode of Rick and Morty. Exploring strange, alien worlds is kind of the game's whole raison d'etre, and it manages to procedurally generate some fantastic landscapes, flora, fauna, and vistas. I've had to hide in a cave when a thermal storm settled over my location and I was out of fuel for my life support systems. I've been to a frigid, snowy world with gold nuggets the size of houses, but I couldn't find anyone to sell it to on planet. I've seen coral venting gas on the jagged coastline of a world where the ocean was super radioactive. I've mined calcium from spherical fruits on a planet where poaching was rigidly enforced by sentinels. I've seen worlds that look like Planet Namek, LV-426, The World of Dr. Seuss, and CGI Trapper Keepers from the 90s. It's not the full spectrum of biomes or planet types, there are no gas giants or purely water worlds or rolling deserts here, but each location feels sufficiently different that it takes several hours of play in a few dozen planets before you get a true sense of the limits of the algorithms being used. And in those moments when you're exploring a new world you don't fully understand, and are trying to come to grips with what life forms are friendly or deadly, what plants provide you with which resources, and where vital outposts are, is really where the game shines. Each time you land on an undiscovered planet you feel like you're an explorer, a scientist, a documenter of new worlds. Those first 5 to 10 minutes on each planet is the high that keeps me playing this game, the fuel that keeps this experience together. But once you have the lay of the land, you run into the game proper, and it's there that things take a sharp decline. First of all, the UI is a usability nightmare across the board. Normally I'd consider this a pretty petty complaint, but it's everywhere. Crafting and character upgrades are done from the same screen because they both consume inventory slots, but that means you're constantly hitting the wrong button for whatever task it is you're trying to do. Whether it's crafting something and accidentally hitting the build an upgrade button, or trying to build an upgrade and accidentally hitting the crafting button, it is really annoying. This is exacerbated by the fact that, at least on the PC, the less common activity, upgrading, is assigned to the left mouse button, while the more common activity, crafting, is assigned to the E key. There's also this weird thing where personal inventory slots and ship inventory slots are the same size on your GUI, but personal inventory slots can only hold half as many of a stacked resource as a ship slot. So two personal slots are the same as one ship slot, if an object is stacked, but if it's not stacked, then one ship slot is equal to one personal slot, and it's just, it's just awful. Meanwhile, character and ship upgrades can't be moved from where they're created for no real reason other than screw you for wanting to have a clean inventory. And the game only saves in two ways, when you get to a save point at a base out in the field, or when you leave your ship. This means a lot of the time you'll want to end your play session by selling all of your junk at a space station, but in order to do so you're going to need to get out of your spaceship, which will save the game, go sell all of your stuff, walk back to your spaceship, get in your spaceship, and then hop out of your spaceship for no reason other than to trigger the save. Then you can quit the game. Multiple people have reported that the ending of the game is bugged if you reach the final atlas shrine without enough atlas stones, there's no way to find your way back to the final shrine after going out into the galaxy to get more, and shrines seem to stop spawning in the universe after you've seen the final one. And if you reach that bad state and want to start over, or if you just want to start over in general, there's no in-game way to do so. You are stuck with the universe you have. There really are just a million irksome little things like this. If you accidentally hit the land button, there's no way to cancel the landing sequence, and launching again requires a lot of plutonium, so you're always carrying more than you need. There's no way to submit all found planets and systems to the repository at once, so you end up clicking through the entire list one at a time and generating units received, units received, over and over. Units received. Units received. Units received. 
Again, I could just, I could keep going and I hate bringing up all these individual things because each one of them is a somewhat petty complaint or minor usability issue, but in aggregate it makes the act of actually playing the game really, really frustrating. However, one-off awkward design and usability decisions can theoretically be patched away. No Man's Sky has a bigger, more fundamental problem. It doesn't have any meaningful direction systems-wise. It feels like a game that had this really cool terrain generation tech developed and then tried to fill the game in with stuff to do for fear that there wouldn't be enough to do, so just keep adding systems. Very little of No Man's Sky's systems interact meaningfully or have sufficient depth onto themselves, and the result is that the game feels confused about what it even wants to be. It's not really a flying game, again, landing is automated, docking is also automated, flying in Atmo is severely curtailed to prevent collisions with the ground or buildings, and most in space flight is just waiting to arrive at your destination. The game has social systems for multiplayer, like naming planets and animals and scanning for the discoveries of others so you can see what other people have done. In a universe so vast you're unlikely to find anything by another player almost ever. There's combat, but on foot fighting feels like playing one of those shoot the water in the clown's face to explode a balloon games from the carnival. And the space combat really requires investing upgrades in a lot of those precious inventory slots to bother engaging with. It's a trading and economics game so far as there are things to collect and things to sell, but because most of the game is just getting fuel to move between star systems, exploiting local supply and demand isn't really an option. There's no buy low, sell high, there's just arrive at a trade post because it's the only one you've seen for the past 20 minutes, dump everything off and either take an accidental loss or sell objects at a small premium. It's more of a random price generator than anything. There are survival game-like mechanics that require you to constantly harvest resources, lest you run out of oxygen, but because they're so easy to come by, and because death has virtually no consequence other than having to pick up your inventory next to your corpse, I can't rightly call it a survival game either. And there's nothing that says the game has to fit neatly into any one of those genres, but it clearly gestures vaguely in the direction of those genres, and then doesn't commit to exploring any of them in any real measure. It doesn't dig deeply into space flight, it doesn't dig deeply into trading, it doesn't dig deeply into survival. It just sort of borrows the core loops of other games that execute on those ideas with more depth, energy, and interest. If it's anything, No Man's Sky is an exploration game of a sort. Like I said earlier, each new planet really is a treat. A surprise of colors and texture, flora and fauna, weather and geography. They're a reward to the player in and of themselves. And the game's attempts to get you to explore what's going on on the next hill over, the next planet over, the next star over, and beyond, really seem like the game's only real directed design element. It's a game about finding things because they're there to be found. Unfortunately, this theme of discovery is somewhat undercut when you can't mark a location on a globe or mark a star system for a return journey. Your discoveries of amazing alien life and radioactive purple sunsets, however cool they may be, are of a transitory nature. Even simple exploration rewards, like knowing where a trading post is on the surface of this planet only a couple miles away, become basically lost once they're no longer on your radar. You can't mark them. There's no going back. Philippa War pointed out on Rock Paper Shotgun that No Man's Sky is less a game about discovery than it is a game about nomadism, and I'd largely agree. If the game has any theme, it is that. You are a stranger in strange lands, forever looking for a home that doesn't exist. You're a creature that doesn't speak any of the languages of the universe's three dominant species. You don't know why you're here, and you're pretty sure you don't belong. No Man's Sky is about homelessness and the need for purpose in a world where home and purpose don't exist. In its own weird way, it's kind of an absurdist game without as much of the humor as one would expect. Here's a vast, complicated world in which you mean very little. You'll never fully understand it. I mean, just recently there was the kerfluffle about whether named animals stay in the system. And so trying to divine meaning from it is just pointless. You can cling to Atlas's promises or try to reach the center of the galaxy or just continue exploring ad infinitum. The game doesn't really care and none of your choices there really matter. Good luck finding purpose and meaning in a game where there really isn't any. In a sense, it's a much better experiment in absurdism than Only If, but the game is just so clumsy with its, well, its everything, that it feels accidental. 
It's like it bumbled into this theme by omission of any real point itself, rather than being a game about this universe's lack of a point. There's no coherence to any of its systems, and no idea or experience that it really wants to sell other than those procedurally generated horizons. Much like Spore, it's a content generation engine first, and a bunch of game systems layered on top afterwards to fill in the blanks. If No Man's Sky works at all, it works as a zen game. If you try to engage with it as a more active game, it will let you down. You'll run into a million interface quirks, and after you best those, you'll find the shallowness of the game's systems make trying to play it deeply or seriously an unrewarding experience. But those shallow systems are actually a draw for the sort of zone-out vegging that Zen games excel in. I could do a separate video on Zen games as a concept, there's a really good piece by Ian Bogost on the Gama Sutra I'll link below, but by Zen game basically I mean a game that is less actively played than it is meditative. No Man's Sky provides just enough systemic rigging to give your hands and mind something to do in the background while you process other stuff. And it rewards you for these continual, casual interactions with amazing views, words of new languages, and fuel to keep you moving through the stars. People joke about smoking some weed and playing the game, and while I've never tried that particular approach, I think there's a reason that idea has sort of caught on. It's a great game to lose yourself in for a while. Not in the immersive, separate reality sense, like so many people seem to want this game to be, but in a more useful sense of turning off your brain to relax after a hard day, or, or quietly collecting your thoughts as you collect plutonium. Like everything else in the game, I kind of feel like this was arrived at by accident. This isn't the designed, intentional Zen game of Animal Crossing or Flower. But it is the reason the game stays on my hard drive even now. It's a fantastic game to zone out to. There's something about just retreating into your own head for a while while collecting mental postcards of sunsets on alien worlds. There may not be a profound purpose or higher calling in the universe of No Man's Sky, but that doesn't mean No Man's Sky can't provide some solace to people in this universe. The tragedy of No Man's Sky isn't that it failed to deliver on some absurd hype, or that the game that was promised in ads wasn't the game we got. The tragedy of No Man's Sky is that it never got the chance to be received for what it is, a flawed game made by a small team that still manages to achieve at least a few exciting, worthwhile things. Just tonight, when I went to go get some pickup footage, I befriended a mushroom thing that gave me a present. That whole weed thing continues to make more and more sense. Then I went to a world with floating disks covered in moss above a rocky surface. Then I visited a gorgeous planet with space pumpkins and red palm trees and a ton of alien ruins and this... thing. And all of that was in one star system among billions, and in maybe a half an hour of play. I really can't think of a single game that can continue to surprise me visually like that. What other games do very well, it does incredibly poorly. But what No Man's Sky does well, it does well all by itself. It may have a terrible interface and a haphazard design, but there really is nothing else like it out there right now. And I think in the middle of all these conversations about what No Man's Sky could have been, or what it should have been, we ought to take a moment and recognize what it is, and really try to find the value in that rather than just lament what it isn't.